I first learned about Margaret Peterson Haddix when I was student teaching in a private English language school in Ponce, Puerto Rico. I entered into a seventh grade classroom halfway through the second semester when the students were reading the second book in Haddix's Shadow Children series, Among the Imposters. That weekend, I was given the first two books in the series to read by my cooperating teacher in order to lead the class in the following week's discussions and activities. As I read the books, this is what I found. Luke Gardner should have never been born. It was against the law. This just in, only two children will be allowed per family now. But he lived among the shadows. In fear. Hidden by his family, with no identity, not wanting to be seen. But were there others like him, among the shadows, among the hidden? Could he ever have a real life? Or would his worst fear come true? Population police, open up. Among the Hidden by Margaret Peterson Haddix. All that is hidden will come to light. Find it at your Cherry Park Library. As you have seen in the student creative video shown, this intense series of books focuses on the idea of what life could be like if the government were to implement a law against having two or more children. In the seven book series, the main character Luke goes from discovering that there are more third children like him in the world, to being caught by the population police, to starting a revolution to free third children from their hidden lives. Where does Haddix get her ideas for her books? She claims from her life experiences. And I got the idea for Claim to Fame because of something that happened with my daughter's volleyball team when she was a freshman in high school. There was always a lot of drama going on on her team. And at one point, it got to the point that parents were yelling at each other, and the coach was crying, and it was just a really bad scene. And it all revolved around one girl supposedly talking about another girl behind that girl's back. After that happened, there was a tournament that my daughter's volleyball team was in, and it was one of those situations where it was amazing that they could play together as a team because it seemed like they all hated each other so much and were fighting so much. And my husband said something to me about one of the girls, and I said, be careful. She's got the kind of ESP where she knows what's said about her no matter what. And a couple hours later, I was driving to do a book signing, and it suddenly dawned on me that if somebody really did have the kind of ESP where they could hear anything that was said about them, it would be a very interesting setup for a story. Margaret Peterson Haddix was born on April 6th of 1964. Growing up, she knew she wanted to be an author. She attributes some of her success in writing to her love of reading books like Harriet the Spy, Anne of Green Gables, Anne Frank, Little Women, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, and Beanie Malone. During family vacations, her parents would always have to tell her and her siblings, stop reading for a minute and look out the window. She also believes her high school experiences in acting in a drama department, playing flute and piccolo in several different types of bands, singing in the school choir, working on the school newspaper staff, running track, serving on the county fair board, and volunteering in church and in 4-H were her inspiration for the plots of her 20 plus books she has published.
After college, she married a fellow journalism major and continued writing for various newspapers up until her husband accepted a city editor position for a newspaper in Illinois. Rather than having her husband as her boss at a local newspaper, she decided to start teaching at a community college and write fiction on her own. In her writing, Haddix found her previous experience as a newspaper reporter helped her develop her abilities for writing from various perspectives and being able to retrieve profound thoughts from the minds of her characters. My background as a journalist affects me as a novelist in a couple different ways. I think one is that I try hard to have my books grounded in fact. And I think I'm much more conscious of trying to do research than I would be otherwise. The other way is kind of the flip side of that, which is that because I've worked as a journalist and I've seen that reality can be very bizarre, I think that makes me more willing to make my books very bizarre. Haddock sold her first two books, Running Out of Time and Don't You Dare Read This, Mrs. Dumfrey, while she was pregnant with her second child. As a new mother, she struggled to continue writing, only finding opportunities to do so during her children's nap time. Exhausted herself, she created the criteria that everything she wrote had to be exciting enough to keep her awake. Now, living in Columbus, Ohio, she still keeps the same criteria for writing, which seems to be working because her writing keeps not only her awake, but also her readers. Books have been honored with the International Reading Association's Children's Book Award, American Library Association Best Book, and Quick Pick for Reluctant Young Adult Readers, and more than a dozen State Readers' Choice Awards. I think most readers think of themselves as ordinary people, so it's easier for them to relate when there's an ordinary character as the main character, or a seemingly ordinary person. And then once they're thrust into an extraordinary situation, I think it's very easy for readers to then wonder, well, how would I react if that happened to me? Writing for teens is a lot of fun because there's so much change that goes on in teens' life, and I can reflect that. And I also don't have to restrict myself as much in terms of the topics that I'm looking at, that uh, teens are much more aware of what's going on around them than, than younger kids, certainly. Uh, since I do have kids who are teens living with me, I realize that teens can also be very cynical, so I realize that as a writer I have to be careful in terms of what I write, that it's not something that they're going to dismiss quickly. Mm -hmm.